Hollywood, California, Tinseltown, the movie factory, a town where it is said they separate the men from the boys with a crowbar. And among the list of immortal stars of the silver screen, names like Bogart, Monroe, Harlow, and Turpin, one name has since been forgotten, Gerald Peasy Perkins, an actor, writer, and director without whom the Hollywood industry would be today. But just who is this forgotten giant of the film industry? To tell you, we must start from the beginning. Peasy was born August 2nd, 1905 in Brooklyn, New York. His parents were vaudevillians who gave Peasy and his six brothers and sisters a taste of the limelight with a musical act involving the whole family. Together they toured the vaudeville circuits and while talent seemed to run in the family, it was clear from the start Peasy was the star of the group. We spoke to retired comic actor and vaudevillian Louis Fagenbaum about his time with the Perkins family. Well, I was a pretty young comic myself in those days, and I was in a review with the Perkins family called The Follies of 1912. It was a vaudeville show. It was a great show, too. It had all sorts of acts like Little Tommy Coins and Rita Ganoy and Jackie Goy, who you remember did the armpit pictures years later. These shows were great. Not like today where you have to pay money to go. Our pictures never had anything dirty, except for full frontal nudity. Why are these things always wet? He turned out to be a German and a fruit. Jimmy Stewart called. It had to be the size of a pumpkin. Carol Lamboid and Clark Gaidel, and they wound up with a tennis racket. Wait a minute, where was I? The best picture I ever made was in 1937. No, excuse me, 38. It is called Don't Touch Me There. It was terrible, don't see it. Al Jolson had a pet beaver that drove a little train. The picture came in underdrawn and over budget. I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted. The whole theater was wrapped in a pine cone. They said don't take a pill, just scrub it. Well, you can't always get the water. Have you even tasted Jello? What about Peasy? Who? Oh. Leaving home at the age of 17, Peasy made his way to Hollywood. He worked as an extra for several years until landing his first role of note, playing Norma Swanson's husband in the 1927 film Impress of New York. Those were the days when stars had faces, faces like this. I was known for my range. I could play it all, happy, sad, angry, seductive. What about Peasy Perkins? Peasy Perkins? Peasy per Oh yes, Peasy Perkins. He was in my film Impress of New York. I remember he complained all the time, despite the fact that he was lucky enough to play my husband. I guess he wanted a speaking role. In 1929, PZ landed a minor but breakthrough role as the singing boat captain in Hello Sailor. Yo ho, you hello boys, get out your lazy lumps, we're heading for shore. One person who saw the film was studio executive Louis B. Haircut. They're doing that. I first saw PZ in that boat picture and I thought, this kid's got it, but that's okay, we'll just film around it. So I hired him with a 10 year leading man contract. Hans and Feet, I understand you directed Peasy in his first speaking role. That's right, I saw Peasy in Hello Sailor, just like everyone else, and I thought, this would make a good leading man, yeah? So I cast him in my next motion picture called Shut Your Mouth Closed. 
But there was one teensy, teensy little tiny problem. I get it. You think I'm just another pretty face. Well, I'm not. Beasley had a voice like a friggin' chipmunk. At first I thought he was just giving me the pulling of the legs, but... Nine. To hear him sing? Wunderbar. To hear him speak? Fingernails on the blackboard. My film was supposed to be a hard-hitting drama. Instead it was the comedy smash of 1930. With PG already signed to a 10-year contract, the studio's hands were tied. So they did the only thing they could. Well, uh, we ended up releasing PG's films as comedies, even though they were written as dramas. Of course, we couldn't let PZ know this because he fancied himself such a star. Luckily, he was too stupid to catch on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a beautiful night here in Hollywood, California, and the crowds have gathered to see the latest from Parasite Pictures. Hey, we're all stuck in a lifeboat. Arriving now is the star of the film, Peasy Parkin. How about a few words for the folks? Well, I think this is gonna be a terrific motion picture. <laughs> now you people listen to me. Nobody. And I mean nobody. Can die in my life. <laughs> the studio's plan worked. The more serious PZ took himself, the funnier it was to audiences. I worked with PZ on a few more pictures, and with each film he became increasingly inquisitive. Inquisitive. He asked a lot of questions. Uh, what does the producer do? Can I try writing this one? Why don't you let the actors have lunch? Because if you give an actor an inch, he'll take the moss and kill the bird. That's cause why. Anyway, I didn't like him. PZ became increasingly dissatisfied with the studio and when his contract was through, formed his own production company in 1939. PZ was now in total control of his films, and it showed. In 1940, PZ met a beautiful... PZ met an actress named Thelma Poundcake. The two were wed in June 1940. PZ was a pig, pure and simple, and that's why I wrote this book. I married a psycho freak, available for $6.95 in bookstores nationwide. How long were you married? Just over a year, but it was doomed from the start. He was an abusive monster. What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? He, he, he crunched his cereal, you know, loudly in the morning. He, he left the top of the toothpaste tube off. For Christmas, I said, get me a solid gold cigarette case. That looks very nice. It's silver, you freak. I blame him for my acting career being cut short. What about... Look, if you want to know any more, you'll just have to read about it in this book. Clearly, PZ's love life was a turbulent one. He was rumored to have had affairs with most of his leading ladies, but never again remarried. And by the 1940s, his professional life was on an equally downward spiral. PZ's films became increasingly poor.
Kobe and his men have been pushing us around for far too long. And now they even want to take our land away. Well, I say it's time we take a stand. So who's with me? His once faithful audience had abandoned him, and he was forced to close his studio. His last film appearance was a bit part in the 1955 low-budget science fiction film, The Atomic Wolf Man from Outer Space. I... This is Stephanie Clayton. Seems Professor Jacobs wrote for an assistant. She's it. Ah, yes, yes. Eric told me you were coming. But I didn't expect to see a biologist that looked like you. Well, that was intended as a compliment. I'm afraid I've gotten a bit rusty. <laughs> Throughout the 1950s and 60s, PZ became something of a recluse. The once popular star was rarely seen outside his home, and rumors began circulating about his mental condition. PZ had developed several mental disorders and refused to leave his home. To the few who saw him, he was unrecognizable. His trademark mustache now grown into a full beard, his hair long and shaggy. Wooby 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 wooby. He developed an obsession for the film Bye Bye Birdie and screened it thousands of times in his room. It seemed as though everyone in Hollywood had forgotten one of its biggest stars. Almost everyone, that is. In 1972, Peasy made a rare public appearance on The Dick Cavett Show. It was to be his last. Say, is there any truth to the rumor that you've gone completely nuts? <laughs> is there? <laughs> Peasy's appearance on the show brought in millions of viewers and rekindled an old flame in Tinseltown. His films began airing on late night TV and it seemed people couldn't get enough of them. What some dubbed Peasy Mania swept the country and PZ's star was on the rise once more. A new feature was in development at Parasite Studios, his former home, the PZ Perkins story, with Rock Hudson in talks to play the lead role, and PZ making a cameo appearance. But fate was to intervene once more. On December 6, 1974, PZ Perkins died. While he was only around to appreciate his newfound fame for a short time, his popularity continued to grow and the entire Hollywood community stopped to pay tribute. He was a very real and a very, very close friend, but I'm sure that almost everyone in the world feels that way about No great desire to be any greater than he was, and he was the greatest. I think he was a very great actor and could have been one of our great dramatic stars if he ever wanted to. The legend that he has left behind is something that is going to be a beacon for many young performers, many older performers. It will be a textbook, in a strange way, of how it should have classically been done. P.C. Perkins had achieved success. Haven't any right, madame, to do the things I do. Just when I hold you tight, madame, you vanish with an eye. I kiss your hand, Madame, and I pray my dreams come true. Who loves you, baby?
you would be. You ought to dress like fashion and ride in motor cars. 